to, to the virus. Meanwhile, the Human Rights Commission says nothing has been done to end the attacks. It says government needs to tackle the root causes of xenophobia. Let's stay with that story. The Centre for Human Rights says South Africans are becoming desensitised to attacks on foreigners. We'll talk now to Joshua Lewitz, who is a researcher at the Centre for Human Rights. Mr Lewitz, good evening. Thank you for coming in. What does the Centre consider evidence that in the main South Africans are becoming desensitised? Um, well, initially, the Centre for Human Rights, uh, we conducted a study on xenophobia in 2009, uh, which included multiple surveys, um, etc. But the recent uh, statement that we released that South Africans are becoming increasingly desensitised um, about xenophobia was based on some video footage that we came across last week circulating the internet. Um, the, footage, the footage showed a Somali man being stoned to death in the middle of a, a busy street um, in Port Elizabeth with people and cars passing by um, and you know, not seemingly to, to care about what is going on right there. And then also um, after we, we published uh, our, our media statement um, on several news websites uh, during today, um, we received an overwhelming amount of comments uh, from the public and most of them being highly disconcerting and um, seemingly supporting the notion that foreign uh, nationals are negatively impacting the country and should just stay away. When you see children, the video that you're talking about uh, shows children at the center of, uh, of that particular attack. We've seen other attacks as well that have been recorded on cell phone footage depicting children being involved. It, what do you rely on there to explain how increasingly children are become, becoming involved in, in, in such incidents? Well, we believe that the example is being set by um, not only you know, people uh, that, that should know better, like uh, the parents of these children or uh, figures in the community, but also by, by politicians, by leaders in government. Um, we, we, when we saw this footage uh, last week, we, we expected some substantial media reports or at least uh, uh, some response from the government. But disappointingly, a few days later, we realized that the incident received very little attention in the local media and government didn't have anything to say at the time. So I think um, by, by expressing their concern, their sincere concern over the situation, government and people in communities would actually you know, affect children and this might change the situation as, as it is right now. What about the root cause? Uh, you know, you, we're talking about people that, you know, as you've seen in, the, in that footage as well, drive by when something like this is happening. It, it, do you attribute it to feelings of, of helplessness or just the frequency of such attacks that people have become apathetic? Um, I think the apathy has something to do with the, the recurring allegations that xenophobia or xenophobic attacks are justified by the link between the influx of foreign nationals and the numbers, the statistics in crime, unemployment and poverty. And even though we understand people in South Africa being um, quite in despair about the, the high numbers in crime, unemployment and poverty in South Africa, we, we still feel that you know, taking justice into your own hands would definitely not solve the problem. In fact, it is only corroding um, the rule of law, the constitution, and the, the protection that the constitution offers not only to citizens but, uh, but non-citizens as well. The, the other glaring omission seems to be the sense you get that there is uh, denialism and impotence from figures of authority in dealing decisively with uh, the causes of xenophobia and the manifestations of xenophobia. Yes, well, um, like I mentioned, we, we, ex we expected at least some response from government um, over the video footage or, or you know, um, the president himself having to take refuge before during the apartheid era uh, expressing his concern, um, but as of yet uh, we, we haven't heard anything. In fact, I think the president from Somaliland, uh, from Somalia, openly wrote a letter to President Jacob Zuma asking him to, to address the situation as soon as possible. I think a lot of South Africans now watching this would want to know, well, how do we fix this? Uh, the solution, I think, is multi-pronged. Um, the first step, obviously, being that we as South Africans need to not only acknowledge the existence of the problem, but we need to admit the problematic nature of it. Um, it has surfaced that South African people um, not only are growing more and more desensitized towards the situation, but we also feel that we have a right to act on it. We need public figures to express their sincere concern, um, and then also for government to take the appropriate measures. We need government to explore and investigate the link between the influx of foreign nationals and um, the statistics in crime, poverty and unemployment. And we also feel that 
you know, um, being an academic institution at the Center for Human Rights, we want to encourage all places of higher learning in the country to formulate strategies of how to incorporate the issue of xenophobia into syllabi and learning plans, creating awareness about the problem and its pervasiveness. And then also we need to, to educate the people essentially about what is going on, as we believe that um, much of the negativity towards foreign nationals are based on some misperceptions and by providing people with some accurate evidence-based information and statistics uh, will be one step closer to addressing the issue. Joshua Lertz, thanks for your time. He's uh, from the Centre for Human Rights at the University of Pretoria, live for us from our Pretoria studio.